how cool would that be to just be able to RV um, the country? And so that's what we did. We went and we bought an RV and, and set off on this macro adventure um, where we go on daily micro adventures. Dave and I got married in 2010 and our dream was to hit the ground running with our careers. We had this idea that if we could work for X amount of time and build up our savings account, then by the time we were ready to have kids, we would have sort of the flexibility to be able to stay home more often with our kids and really focus on our family. We owed an amount of money that was basically around $1 million. That was completely devastating to us because we had never seen that much money in our lives. I went in for my first appointment and over the weekend I realized that I had started miscarrying. And so um, we went through the pain of that um, and that was really hard. We are pregnant with the number two. We're still going through all of these struggles financially. I think the house had been on, a, on the market for one week, and then Hurricane Matthew hit Florida <laughs> and destroyed our home. We both looked at each other and we thought, you know, I think, I think we just need to go. I think we just need to leave. I think we need to leave our house fully staged, furnished, everything, and just leave. Like, let's take the pressure off this house selling. We packed our bags, we got in the car, got in Dave's truck, and we left. It, you know, I think as Christians, we always sing these songs about like, all we need is you. And it was one of those moments where it was almost like, all we have is you. Um, and so it became us the hard way, God allowing suffering to help be the catalyst um, of our heart clinging to Him and finding freedom and peace in Him. While we're driving, Dave gets a call from his buddy who's our realtor and he says, hey, you got a full asking price offer on your home. Our house sold, which is so crazy. We just started to kind of reevaluate our life. And 10 years from now, do we want it to be exactly what it was becoming? So we just decided to live um, simply so that we could simply live during this period. It didn't feel sad. It felt more like a weight off of our shoulders. It felt like a relief. Everything that we need to live in breathe and survive is right here in this 28-foot trailer. We finally were able to pay pay it off. It's just crazy to, to think where we were a couple years ago and that big amount of money. If you would have told me three years ago that we would be, we would have that completely paid off, I would have told you you were crazy, yeah, you know? Right. And uh, so we're just so, so grateful and thank God for all of it. Whatever money we do make from social media, we've kind of vowed to give it back to our followers or give it to local churches through our travels. Because we've really realized through all of this that number one, our money is not our own. Like our money belongs to God and He can bless us with a significant amount of money and just as quickly He can take it away. I think that as we're on this sloppy road of sanctification and you know the ups and downs of becoming slowly more and more like Christ, I think even with possessions and and things and money in our culture I think a lot of times we're looking for Christ to to bless us and which he does um, but when it seems as though he's not um, that doesn't mean that his love or affection or desire for us has changed at all God just wants our hearts that's all he wants you know like I think that 
through any amount of suffering we do or whatever adventures life takes us on or takes anyone on for that matter, I think the reality is, is that God just wants to use these things in this world to bring us good and to bring Him glory.